We are a training providing company based in the West Midlands, and today I'm going to be showing you how to demonstrate a pre use check on those drugs. So, first off, we're going to take a look at our forks then. We're going to split those up into sections, the first section being our fork tips. If we have a look, we're looking for those sharp edges and no excessive thinning. Working our way up the forks, we can take a look at our fork bar and our fork heel, check if you know cracks or splits, particularly paying attention to our welding at the top and at the bottom for any sorts of cracks. Next, we can have a look at our safety pins at the top. Our secure pins, we're going to make sure that they're locked in. You can see that as they are lying horizontally and they are attached to the line. Next, we're going to take a step back, have a look at the forks, check that they are spaced evenly, and that they're also okay. So next we have the carriage plate, which is this section here. What we're going to be doing first is take a look in the side, make sure it's nice and straight, we know distortions or bends. Next, we're going to take a walk down, check our stop bolts at both corners, to make sure they're nice and secure. After that, we can take a look at the top of our carriage plate, pay attention to our cancellations, make sure that they're squared off and not rounded, as this means the pins will be able to slide out very easily. And finally, what we'll do is we'll pay attention to the top, make sure it's nice and greased, but also, as it's greased, things tend to stick to it, so what you do want to make sure that there's no debris stuff. Next, we can take a look at the outer part of our mast. We'll look for three things. The first thing, ensuring that our pure sticker is in good condition, that it's clean and visible to the operator and any pedestrians passing. Next, we can take a look at any weldings. We have some just at the sides, and also at the top by the chain securing pin. We're going to make sure there's no cracks or splits in those. And finally, we can have a walk around to the front of our truck and check that the mast is nice and straight with no distortions. Up next, we can take a look at the inside of the mast, pay attention to the mast rollers and the slides. First off, we'll take a look at the slides themselves. We want to make sure that they are sufficiently greased with no debris stuck inside them, as we made as apparent with the carriage plate. Also, pay attention to the inside, you want to make sure there's no polishing or scoring, as this may indicate something's not running smoothly. Next, we can take a look down at our rollers, make sure that they're nice and cylindrical with no flat spots, and finally, that there's nothing stuck inside those rollers. and our securing pins. So first up, we're going to talk about our securing pins. Located at both ends of our chain, you want to make sure that any welding surrounding is no cracks or splits, and also that the cutter pin located is in good condition. Pay attention to the nuts at the end of the anchor point. You want to ensure that there's no small brown mat or shiny thread indicating that it may have hands. Next, we're going to take a look at our pulley at the top. Two things. The first thing, you want to make sure that there's no debris stuck inside that that may impact the chain from running through it smoothly. Second of all, have a look from the front. Check that the chain is running along it nice and straight. Finally, we're going to take a look at our chain, ensuring that no links or pins are missing, and also there's no damage to them. You want to make sure that the chain is lightly greased, with nothing stuck to it, and also make sure that it's not rusted from any sort of weather. Next, we can take a look at our hydraulics. Pay attention first off to the hydraulic piping down the bottom. Three things for that. The first thing, ensure that there's no leakages, as there's hydraulic oil running through these. Those leakages may be found on the floor where it may have been parked, or on any of the connections. Next, we want to ensure that there's no bulging or swelling of the pipes, as that may indicate a blockage of some sort. Finally, we want to make sure that they are tucked back, away from any sort of moving parts, so they can't get damaged. Secondly, we're going to take a look at our cylinders and our prisons. The cylinders themselves ensure that there's no cracks or any sort of dents, as this may impact the piston from running through nice and smooth. Piston at the top, we'll take a look, ensuring that it's two things one, clean, and the other, dry. Up next, we can take a look at our wheels and our tires. First off, we'll take a look at our wheels, 
we shut up the rim, there's no damage to that, that's going to impact the way the truck moves. Also, our centre plate is nice and flat, and all our wooden nuts are on the top. Next, we can take a look at our tyre, making sure that there's no excessive chunking around the edges, and nothing stuck inside. If there is any debris stuck inside, attempt to take that yourself. If that's not possible, then try to get someone more competent to do that for you. Finally, we can take a look at our tread, ensuring that it is above our safety line just here. And also, we can take a look just inside our axle to ensure that there's no banding or wrapping stuck around there. Up next, we're going to take a look at the external condition of our truck. We're going to take a look around our truck, ensuring that there's no damages. Specific attention should be paid to the rear of the truck as this is where the weight and the battery or the gas bottle is located. Any damage to the rear of the truck will affect the truck's capacity and therefore derate it. Next you're going to pay attention to our towing pin, ensure that it's in place. That's in place to make sure that if the truck does break down then it can be towed out safely. Now any damages to the rear may be indicated by a scratch that is new that you may have not seen before. Now those may be a different colour to the truck. When that's the case, what you can do is take a look around the facility that you've been using the truck to ensure that it hasn't hit anything and caused major infrastructural damage. Next, we can take a look at our overhead guard, rocks or fobs. Rollover protection system is our rocks and falling object protection system is our fobs. We're going to take a look at the corners, make sure that any welding is sound, we know cracks in. Take a look at the top, make sure that everything is nice and secure, and also that it's free of any sort of debris on top, which may impact the driver's visibility. And finally, have a look at the general condition of it, ensure that there's no distortions and it's not taken any time. Next, we can take a look at our controls and our rating plate. Our controls, all you're going to do to those first off, you just give them all a little bit of a wiggle, just to make sure that they're nice, sound and secure and not going to come off in our hands. Next, we can take a look at our rating plate. That will tell us three things. It will tell us the max capacity of the truck, the max height of the truck, and also the load centers. Now this plate here must ensure that it's four things. You want it to be clean, visible to the operator, legible and accurate. also our seat and restraining systems. So first up, we're going to take a look at the footwell of our lift truck, ensuring that there's no debris stuck behind the pedals, and that also the pedals have their rubber on. If the pedals do not have their rubber on, and you begin to stop, your foot may slip off, causing you to not have control over the Next, we'll take a look at our seat, ensuring that one, it's fully adjustable, and that two, once it's adjusted, also with this you want to check the upholstery of the seat to ensure that there's no rips, tears or gouges as an uncomfortable operator will not be working to the best of their ability. Finally, take a look at our restraining systems, check in if there are rips or tears throughout the length of our belt, any stitch at the top and at the bottom, and also the buckle for any sort of damages. We'll plug this in, give it a little tug just to ensure it's locked in correctly. Next, we're going to take a look at our warning indicators. So, to pay attention to the dash then, as we turn the truck on, we want to ensure that all the lights light up, they all go back off, leaving only the parking brake. Any lights left on will indicate a problem with the engine or the electronics. Once we've turned it on, we want to know that we can check, we can turn it all back off again and completely disconnect the battery. The way we do that is by depressing our isolator switch. Up next is our lights and beacons. First off, pay attention to the beacon. Take a look, pop our hand out, just to ensure that we can see the flex not going correctly. We'll turn on our front lights if you have them, and similarly, place your hand out onto each one to ensure they're on the front. Up next we have our audible warnings. 
two are very common on the trucks. The first one being your horn, using it with several short sharp blasts. Next, we may have a reversing beeper, which this truck does not have, many of them will. So all you do is place it into reverse and wait for the Thank you. 